Um, after that, it's like, well, I enjoyed it so much. But then it got to a point that I had to resign. Wow. Whether would I be continuing this passion or, or succumb to the corporate stability? And? Well, I'm here right now. Yeah. 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 So we know what he chose. <laughs> so, he well, chose my money. I, I chose <laughs> money. There's still money in fashion, but yeah, I chose the easy way out. And I heard mm -hmm. from stories from, you know, a little bird told me about you. What? So what's happening with you? What's happening? Yeah. Well, me naman, I started early on. I started okay. in repertory Philippines back in 2000. So baguettes for a teenager, teeny bopper. And then my struggle came um, when I graduated college. Should I continue with passion or should I go with all the rest of my batchmates, you know, building a career in the corporate world, mm -hmm. starting to, you know, build up your finances and stuff. Mm -hmm. So back then, I chose the corporate side. I actually worked for the airlines for four years. I was in Etihad Airways. And then after four years, the passion just kept screaming. So that's why it's hard. All right, that's, so the passion kept screaming. All right. So you, I came back, I started to do some acting, and then now I put nine works, I do TV commercials and stuff. But for some reason, I think I'm at the point of my life again where I'm starting to think and struggle which direction I should go to. So... So... You're still deciding. I'm still deciding. So I went to New York. I was there for two months. And then, you know, it was kind of like a sabbatical, figuring out what to do with your life. Oh, New York. Yeah. So you need so to go to New York. All right, okay. So New York, I'm a big thing. Good one. Uh-oh, -uh, so and, yeah. and now you're back. Yes, so, I'm back. The decision is? I still don't know. <laughs> So the clock is still ticking. The clock is still ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. Ah, wait, long tick tock. On that note, okay, let yeah. us allow us to welcome everyone to the newest musical of Night Works Theatrical. Welcome to the brand new musical, Tick Tick Boom. Okay, that's right. So this is the musical of Winter Prize winner and Tony Award winner Jonathan Larson. Who doesn't know him? Everyone knows him. Um, he wrote the scene. He is the, the man behind, and he knows him. And he is the man behind the Smash musical Rent. So, in celebration of the 20th anniversary of Rent, Nine Works Theatrical wanted to stage the autobiogra autobiographical musical of the man who wrote Rent. The Tick Tick Boom is a fantastic look into what Jonathan Larson must have gone through as a struggling composer and a writer in the early 90s when he wrote this musical about struggling artists trying to make his mark in the world. So, the struggle and conflict between following your passion or settling for a stable life is a constant, never-ending debate. Okay, so it's a story, you know what GM, this is actually a story that is relevant as long as there are people out there who are having a difficult time struggling to make ends meet at the same time pursuing their dreams. In short, hashtag adulting. Alright, so to tell us more about what, uh, how we came about, how Nine Works Theatrical chose to stage Tick Tick Boom, we'd like to call on the executive producer of Nine Works Theatrical, Mr. Santi Santa Maria. Okay, thank you, Isa and Gia. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming over. Uh, I knew it was I know it was traffic earlier, but you guys are here. And we are here again for like the end press con, I think, and uh, of course familiar faces as well. Uh, thank you so much uh, to our friends from the press. Thank you also to Rockman Club for always supporting uh, Nine Rooms Theatrical, of course. And uh, the yummy food that you actually ate was from the plaza. Also one of our friends, okay? So anyway, um, Tick Tick Boom. Uh, why did we actually come up with this show? First and foremost, I'd like to tell you a backstory about this. I really didn't know about what Tick Tick Boom was all about. I was talking to Ren earlier. I was ch chatting with uh, Bea also. And I was, I was telling, I was, I was telling you know, at that time, Way before I said, what is Tick Tick Boom? I've been hearing them from my thespian friends. I've been hearing from Robbie, especially John John, who's been, who's been telling me all about it. And oh, okay, it's basically related to rent and everything. It's like, really? Okay. 
And then uh, last year we had uh, we had a cattle call for auditions for our season for this year, and a lot of uh, a lot of our theater friends auditioned, and Bitoin Escalante was one of them. Bito was one of them. And actually, I was surprised when I we asked her uh, what she was eyeing for, and she said, "Well, you know, I'm." I actually want to try out Tic Tic Boom again. Like, really? So I thought, oh my gosh, but that's like, I think Bito at that time, uh, well, the, she did it with Michael, Michael De Mesa, and uh, uh, Jet Pan, and that was like 10 years ago, or more, oh. Yeah, so I was like, really? So, so you, you still, you very much are still in this Tic Tic And then, of course, everyone knows that we staged La Cajo Fall, and Michael De Mesa was there, and I was talking to, to Michael about it. And I said, Michael, what's up? How's how is how is Tic Tic Boom? And uh, how's the music and everything? Oh, it's fantastic! It's wonderful! And I said, Really? So I okay, so it just got me so curious. Okay, and um, with Nine Works Theatrical, the past shows that we've done, they're mostly big shows from La Cajo Fall, uh, and then well. We did Fifty Shades, <laughs> but and then of course, I mean, <laughs> sure. American Idiot, and then um, well, we have our big musical still upcoming for the year, which is going to be in December. So we wanted to mix things a bit, just to have some variety, and we wanted a small show as well. And uh, Tick Tick Boom is in a way different because it's also an acting piece. A lot of my thespian friends or friends from the industry, they actually love the show. And um, I was trying to figure out why, and when I actually, of course, had to do my research and study it, I, I, I just realized that, ah, okay, that's the reason why these artists love this show so much, is because it, they can actually relate to it. My cool it actually strikes a chord uh, with them. And uh, we're very excited to actually show, show the people to you. Of course, another, main reason why we're doing it is because Rent was a big part of Nine Works Theatrical's history. Um, when we started Nine Works Theatrical, we did three runs of Rent and it was very successful. And in a way, to pay homage to Rent, it is Rent's 20th uh, year anniversary. And But of course, I didn't want to do, or we didn't want to do Rent again. <laughs> you know, so it's been done several times and I said, wait, you know, maybe we can, let, let's do Tick Tick Boom because Tick Tick Boom basically is the story of Rent, or how Jonathan Larson came up uh, to actually create or come up with Rent. And uh, it's, again, it's very exciting. Uh, he, 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 he mentioned Suburbia in the show, but Suburbia was basically the title, the working title of Rent prior to it becoming Rent. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, uh, very excited about this and uh, wait, I have some of my, <laughs> my notes here. Okay, so uh, it's an acting piece also. It's not, it's not something that's very commercial. Uh, that's, that's probably the reason why we would love to want to mix it up, a variety of shows that we would want to stage so that, you know, uh, even next year we are actually planning to do we are thinking of an original and probably do a straight play. So something that would be very different from a nine work show. And uh, Tick Tick Boom, of course, again, we are very excited because uh, it's very different from the usual shows that we usually run. So it's a limited run, eight runs long. So guys, if you can just uh, help us out, of course, with Tick Tick Boom, uh, it's going to be a great show. Thank you very much for supporting nine works again. Uh, um, can't wait for you guys to see it. Thank you. Just to continue on how, how hard it is to really put something up of this nature, we'd like to thank the sponsors, uh, the Rockwell Club, Mac Cosmetics, the official makeup partner, Lifestyle Channel, Preview Magazine, Pop Magazine, Status Magazine, Spot.ph, UniquelyPhenoid.com. And of course, we would also like to thank Radio Republic, the Manila Times, MVNTO, Power Max Center, and Converse. So thank you so much for being with us and staging this very exciting musical. Okay, so we already heard from Sandy 
how about we hear from the other partner? So to tell us more about what to expect and what to watch out for, we would like to call on the Artistic Director of Nine Works Theatrical and the Director of Tick Tick Boom. Let us all give a round of applause for Mr. Robbie Guevara. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. Uh, I was supposed to be here at 8.30, I got here at 9.30 because of the traffic there in Australia. And then I didn't know that they closed off Australia from EDSA. So I had to go around. From BGC, I went all the way to Shaw to turn around and come But anyway, I really, 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 really appreciate everyone coming. I know if we can hold your press ones in your our press ones in your office, you would prefer that. But uh, but such is life. Uh, we have a new government, and they're trying out new schemes, and I guess we have to all <laughs> give our be patient and uh, help them out with it as well. So, uh, what to expect from Tick Tick Boom? Uh, you know, in almost all of the shows we've done, uh, I've always been surprised myself, so honestly, I don't know what to expect. Uh, we've been doing music rehearsals this past week, and uh, we haven't started blocking yet. Uh, and Mio Infante has just finalized this I finalized the set just a few days ago, and uh, it's very different from what we've been doing. We have, we've always been giving you proper full sets that are eye candy-ish. This is still eye candy-ish, but it's bare. <laughs> mm. So, what to do on an empty stage with a theater that normally had, that normally accommodates casts? from 10 to 17 people, and now we only have three. Uh, when we did last five years, I had two. But the set was full. We had all these things hanging. Uh, don't expect that. It's going to be very different. As a matter of fact, when we decided to do Tick Tick Boom, uh, the limited knowledge I had of the show back then, I didn't want the set. I wanted it just to be all lights. So. Neo, who hadn't read the script at that time, uh, which made him pull it a few months ago about the set. And uh, when he finally did read the script, he agreed that it should be a very, very minimal set, which means I can still play with the lights. Uh, so that I'm excited about because we will bring you to all the scenes, and there are a lot of scenes. There's three people, two of them play like three to four characters each. And we have to transport you from the flat to the office, to the diner, to the theater, and all that, which is lights. So that's, that's exciting for me, uh, from my point of view. I'm also very excited to work with these three people. Jeff uh, Flores, who is now, I don't know if you've seen his other shows, but he's amazing. And we were really, 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 really glad that he uh, auditioned and gave us his time to, to join us. Uh, these two, well, I'm pretty close with them. Um, saw her in Miss Saigon in London last October, twice, because she's really, really amazing. Uh, but, like I said, these two will be playing multiple characters, and this is the first time they'll be doing it. Outside of playing ensemble, uh, they have to really convince you that Again, with minimal costume changes and all that. That's the challenge that these two are going to be facing, and I'm so excited. Uh, what else? That's the staging part. Um, Story-wise, uh, as our hosts mentioned and as Santi mentioned a bit, uh, it's autobiographical about Jonathan Larson. He started off um, in, the in 1990 as a, as a monologue, a rock monologue. A monologue with songs. And then when after Rent's success and then he passed away, they took it up and then one consultant writer turned it into a three a three hander. And uh, the rest is history. So uh, what else? Uh, if you have questions, I pretty much don't wanna but don't have anything else to add. I mean everything's in Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, that, that's essentially it. Uh, Which has never come. Santi mentioned something very interesting, though. It's very this this play, this show is very close to artists in general. Uh, me as well, because 
I left the corporate world uh, to pursue theater full time, which I have for the past 20 years. I went back to corporate world last April, uh, but not out of well, semi out of necessity because I'm getting married. Uh, but more of like a responsibility. <laughs> and I have to say, well, uh, um, but it, I, you know, my family has businesses, and so you know, my dad and his siblings are getting old. So we need my brother and I were involved, and we're just helping out. Uh, it's more of our family responsibility than it is that big, big boom of what am I going to do with my life. Uh, that's it. But first time I heard this, uh, Big Big Boom, back in 2001, when the CD came out, I actually like the songs better than the rent. Uh, I think it's closer. To the part. And when you hear some of the songs, you kind of figure out that uh, I don't know about rent. I have this feeling that um, Jonathan Larson did intend for some songs to be in the rent, which he later on replaced. Uh, with the ones that eventually got final impact. But uh, that, those are things to look out for. Especially his, you know, he has a, he has a signature sound. And hopefully that, that brings you back as well. That's it. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. Uh, hope you enjoy your lunch. And we'll see you later. Thank you so much again. You all you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, right. Sandy and Robin. And yes. now. Do you want wow. to meet our cast? I want you... to meet them, but I think they already know. They already know. No, no, wait. They have to experience their talent. Yes, right. yes. After all, it's a musical. So why don't we give them a teaser of what they are about to see in just about a month? Let, let us experience. Let us let them experience the music as well. So please welcome our cast singing songs from the musical ticket room. Let us all welcome on stage. Jeff Flores, Tanya Manana, and Ariel Leonel.